All right, today we are uh, doing, uh, we're in Luke chapter 15, where there's three absolutely amazing parables. We're going to go over the first two today and tomorrow. And then next week, not next week, two weeks, next week we're going to be back in Acts. And the week of Christmas, we're going to go over the parable of the lost son, which is an amazing Christmas parable. Uh, so come back in two weeks for that, but don't miss today and tomorrow. So today we're doing the parable of the lost sheep. Uh, Luke 15, 1. Then all the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to him to hear him. And the Pharisees and the scribes complained, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. And he spoke this parable to them, saying, Here's the great thing about Jesus. Jesus came to show everybody how to come to know him. It didn't matter whether you're with him or for him. He came because he loved you. It says in John 14, 6, that I am the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He said, This is the way. And I come, you know, I, I'm not here to condemn you. I'm here to show you the way. I'm here to show you the truth. I'm showing you to show you what real life is. What an amazing thing that is. And uh, and we got to realize that when you're sharing the gospel, you know, don't, Jesus, remember, before you came to Jesus, you, you were that sinner. You were that person who was supposedly undeserving in the world's eyes. But God said, nope, I have mercy on you. I have grace on you. I love you. And I share my message with you. And you can be part of my family. You are invited. Remember from earlier in this week, everybody is invited to come to his house. For an amazing dinner that will last for all eternity. So uh, verse 4. What man of you having a hundred sheep. If it loses one of them. Does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness. And go after the one which is lost till he finds it. And when he has found it. He lays it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he comes home. He calls together his friends. His neighbors saying to them. Rejoice me if I have found my sheep. Which was lost. I say to you likewise. There will be more joy in heaven. Over one sinner who repents. Than over ninety-nine just persons. Who need no repentance. God says you know what. When one gets lost, doesn't matter what you think. He's saying here, it doesn't matter. He's like, I got 99 sheep. That's great. 99%. That is great. You know, if you go to school or you go to a test or something, you get a 99% on it. You're not really worried about that 1%. Because, man, that, that was great. Yeah, you wish you had the 100%, but, boy, 99, that's pretty good. And you're happy with that. You know what God's saying here? He said he's not satisfied with 99%. He wants everyone. And if a sheep wanders off, Guess what? He cares just as much about that one sheep than all the ones who are totally righteous all the time. He wants everybody to know his love. He wants everybody to be in his sheepfold under his protection, being fed by him, being taken care of by him. He wants that. He does not want to settle for anything less than 100%. He wants us to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Mark 16, 15. He doesn't have specific things. That, that was some of the problem. Well, this is for us and not for you. You know, if you eat, that's no. Jesus says every single person. A few weeks ago, I was invited to a uh, to do a, a, a service. Uh, they were going to pray for Israel. And I thought, oh, that, that's because of the war that was going on. I initially said yes. Then I got a call a few weeks later saying, oh, by the way, if you come, you can only pray for Israel and the Jewish people. And I said, well. The war is going on over there, but there's Palestinians who need to know Jesus. Uh, there are Christians who are living in Israel who are neither Jewish nor Palestinian who are caught in the middle of all this. And also the, the terrorists, the Hamas. Um, you know, you know, the greatest way to solve the problem is a revival to break out and their leaders to become to know Jesus Christ. That would solve all the problems. You know, I, I, I want to pray for what's happening in Israel for all the people those who don't know Jesus and those who do, for God to do a great work. And you know what I was told? I was told, no, you can't do that. And so I, I politely declined the invitation that, that, that comes speak. You got to understand that Jesus doesn't just focus on one set of people. Jesus loves everybody. And you want God to move in your life. You want the gifts of God to move in your life. You want God to bless you uh, emotionally, spiritually, physically, financially, personally. You have to look on everybody in your life as someone that Jesus loves and think, what can I do to show the love of Jesus? Oh, but Pastor, you don't know who's in my life. Yeah, I don't, but God does. And guess what? God loves them too and says they can come. They are invited. Jesus died for every single human being. When we do that, God will move your life. But, but they might do things. But, then, but here's the fact, the fact that you're showing them love. You're saying, I care about you. Because God cares about you. Then you know what that does? God says that I'm going to care about you more because you care about what I care about. And I want you to keep doing that. And God will move in your life in a greater way. That is what the parable of the 99 sheep is all about. Looking at others and saying, well, I, I, I'm good enough. 
I, I've reached enough people. No, as long as you're alive, you can still share Jesus. Somehow. There's somebody else who just needs to have that opportunity. Now, here's the thing. Our job is not to convert them. Our job is to give them the opportunity to come to know Jesus and then how we present it. Remember yesterday's devotional. Uh, make sure you're seasoning it properly. Um, and if we do that, we can do a great work for God. And if they come against us, Here's what Jesus says. He'll raise up a standard against them. He'll protect us. He'll put a hedge around us. Why? Because if we're doing what he wants us to do, he wants us to keep doing that. He knows if we get beat up, we won't want to do it anymore. So he will protect you going forward. But he, he protects those who actually do what he asks to be done and looks at everybody as that sheep that's gone astray that God cares for just as much as he cares for you. What an amazing thing that is. So remember, Jesus loves you. I love you. And you're absolutely awesome.